I love how Rui's just sort of like standing off to the side and staring at us. She's like, just like, turned the head to the side, like, hey, what's up, Dad? <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Pokemon Coliseum. Last time, we we battled all the Pokemon trainers in Dueling Square, snagged all of their Pokemon, Bar Quag's Eye, dodged you, that was close, wasn't it? Uh, because of reasons, and also, went to the Coliseum, found out that Kale had a strange Pokemon, which we have now discovered to be called Shadow Pokemon. We don't have to call them Pokemon Black Auras anymore. Today, we're initiating a cutscene with someone that's had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> this is someone, there's trouble, H help me. Um, his feet are fixed to the ground while the rest of his body gyrates? And he's still like it. That's a bit worrying. The chief's inside. Silver came and... He's just really inspecting that joint between the dirt and the concrete there. It's fine. Let's let's take a look inside here. Uh-oh. Uh appears to be a power supply. This could be a problem. It appears to be a power supply. Good to know. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That silver's gone too far this time. He ripped out and ripped off with one of the gears. The Coliseum's gonna be without power. Chief, are you alright? Yeah, the only thing that's bruised is my pride. It was only Silver, so he wasn't expecting any trouble. Huh? But isn't Silver Duking's trusted lieutenant? What's his motive for doing this? That's what I want to know. He was ranting about how the Colosseum has, uh, can just shut down or something. Sorry to worry you younglings. Thanks, I'll be fine now. But I need to ask a favor, will you hear me out? Yeah, sure. If the Colosseum loses power, the whole town suffers. I need you to find that gear Silver ran off with. I'm counting on you, younglings. Oh boy. Hmm, do you think Silver had a falling out? No, I can't be right. Silver would never betray you, King. Interesting. There's big trouble. The Coliseum must be in an uproar now without any power. Oh, there's a lot of people in that Coliseum. The whole town suffers. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so if we were to look around Pyrite Town long enough, we would probably run into an NPC that tells us uh, Silver must be driven to desperation. Yeah. Uh, we would probably run into an NPC that would tell us where we would likely find this gear. However, having played the game multiple times, I know where it is. We just have to go somewhere where we know there's a bunch of scrap metal and uh, what better place to look than a construction lot. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you guys a run around talking to like 50 million NPCs that might tell you where the gear is because it's just back here. <laughs> That's found the gear for the windmill. Obtained the gear. And it fits in our trench coat. That's amazing. I just smuggle it under my coat, you know. <laughs> like you're trying to sneak a bag of popcorn you bought from the supermarket into the cinema because they don't let you bring your own bags of popcorn in. What kind of a stupid rule is that anyway? It's like they can't enforce it either. So excuse me, no, you can't bring that popcorn in here because we sell popcorn and you must have our popcorn. You must throw this popcorn in the bin. Like, no. I'm already paying like three times the price of a DVD to watch a cinema movie anyway. <sighs> Rant over. Terribly sorry, Chief. You're sure you're okay? Uh, yep, I'm fine. There's no need for all the worrying. Good, that's good. But Silver, this is an outrage. No, no. I reckon he agonized over this and did it because he thought it right. I can't blame the man for that. Enough about that juking. Instead, I think you should look over there. Hi. What? You people? Indeed. <laughs> I reckon you might be saying thanks, Juking. The, the, that's the gear. You found it for us. What amazing luck. I'll ask you to excuse me for my behavior earlier. You seem to be people who are worthy of trust. You have my sincere thanks. Alright, I'll get you to slot that gear snugly back into that gap where it belongs, because no one else has amazing trench coat pockets like us. Alright, there we go. And with the gear installed, we can, uh, we can... Start cranking gears again. All right, done. Stand by. Let it roll. Oh, 30 long years of cranking gears. Oh, yeah. Love this guy. Especially his mustache. Again, I mentioned that last time. All right, and the windmill's going again. And it's hard to believe that this tiny little windmill powers the entirety of uh, uh, Pyrite Town, but hey-ho. Whoa, <laughs> this is the way it ought to be. Things are fine now. Oh, that neck twist. Alright, if we try and get out of here... Juking, I can tell that you're a man of courage and honor. I have a favor to ask. Will you hear me out? Yes. I'm grateful. I want you to enter the next Colosseum battle. Oh, finally! I need to win the knockout challenge and find out what's going on there. I can tell from a glance that you're no ordinary trainer. 
I know you can win. I'm sorry, but help me. Well, how about we finally enter a Colosseum battle? Oh my goodness. So, Colosseum battles, I would say they're a little bit different to normal trainer battles, but they're not. I mean, um, the majority of the, the battles that you play in Colosseum are rebattleable anyway. The Colosseums work a little bit differently. I guess I should heal up. I want to give Umbreon a little bit. Actually, you know what? I, I kind of want to keep the Shadow Pokemon that we have. Oh my god, it's so good to say Shadow Pokemon. I kind of want to keep the Shadow Pokemon at the front that we have at the front anyway. Um, I believe our Pokemon are healed between matches. I can't actually remember if they are or not. That's a, that's a good point. <laughs> Here's my chance to win the knockout challenge and score myself an awesome Pokemon. Oh, sheesh, what am I saying? You have to keep that a secret. Pretend you never heard me, okay? Let's finally talk to the receptionist. Thank you for your patience. The power has been turned back on. I'll be happy to accept registrations for the next challenge. Hello, welcome to the Pirate Coliseum. Would you like to join the knockout challenge? Coliseum battles are held in a double battle style with two Pokemon out from each party. You will win the challenge if you defeat four trainers in a row. The challenge winner will receive a, uh, not only a big cash prize, but a technical TM machine as well. Trademark. All right, yes, I will be entering with the Pokemon I have in your party. We're gonna leave Rui behind and we're gonna enter in the Pyrite Coliseum. Man, I can't recall how many times I've heard that awesome tune. Hawks, it's not going to be easy to get a winning streak going. I think this is the hunter that was actually at the the front of the desk there. Uh, who knows? Who knows? It might be. It might just be a completely different ho uh, Hawks. <laughs> it might be a completely different hunter. So yeah, like the receptionist was saying, we have Colosseum battles here, which are double battles. They are four round knockout tournaments. Uh, basically, defeat the Pokemon and move on. That's all you have to do. Okay, so Slugma, bad choice. I'm going to switch in with Umbreon. I would like to get Flaffy uh, a little bit of extra screen time, but sadly, uh, Flaffy is weak to ground types, and Barboach that's on the field here is a ground type. So, what I did last time when I skipped through, or uh, I sped through, oh, there we go, fever pitch. Uh, last time when I sped through all of the um, the different shadow Pokemon we could catch, it's just because there was a lot in one big chunk. Normally, I won't be doing that. Um, I think what I might do is, because this game is very battle heavy, not only do you have the Colosseum matches here, but you've also got things like um, uh, just the random trainer encounters that you do find, and there are a lot of them. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of them. So I think for some episodes, when there's a lot of trainer battles in one episode, I might be cutting them out if there's no Shadow Pokemon or Pokemon of Note in there. Um, let me know what you guys think about that, because it's something I've been deliberating. I think it would just make the Let's Play go a bit smoother without having to spend, you know, an extra potentially 10 hours <laughs> doing Pokemon trainers. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that, because I've been, like I said, I've been deliberating what to do. Um, the next episode, that might actually feature quite heavily, because the area which we're going through has got a lot of trainers in it. Uh, and not a lot of shadow Pokemon that we can snag. There's a few, but of course I will be going over them when I find them. Oh, that was a nice critical hit knocked out. Jeez, good good job, pal. All right, and what a gun again. That's absolutely fine. Barboach isn't the greatest Pokemon. I mean, it's not doing much to us. And luckily, Hox here only has two Pokemon, so I'm actually going to save a bite. Um, and I'm going gonna, gonna to waste a Hypnosis there, just because Secret Power should definitely take out Barboach. Now, like I said, I can't remember if you heal between battles here. I think you should. Like, it, it would make sense if you do, but... Especially since you're when you're facing four trainers in a row, um, they all get to start off at fresh health. you still got a long, long way to go in Pyrite Coliseum. Damn straight. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's take a look. We have our second battle here, and as nostalgic and as amazing as the tune is... Oh, you can skip it. You plan to win it all? You know that's impossible. Well, I don't think that's impossible, Tisla. Tisla? What kind of a name is that? This Let's Play and this game is just a whole bunch of... What kind of a name is that? <laughs> uh, so we have a Natu and a Meditite. Meditite's a cool Pokemon, actually. It turns out to be a pretty solid mixed attacker. Noctowl did get fully healed, so you do get fully healed between battles. So that makes this a lot easier than I thought. Alright, let's just first of all focus on Natu, because Natu can go out quite easily. Um, so the way the Colosseums work is that 
you get a cash prize and a TM when you beat the Colosseum. Um, and the next time you challenge it, the Pokemon will be different. I think there's four sets of four for each Colosseum uh, that you can potentially battle and gain the rewards on. Uh, but once you get the tr uh, the trademark, I'm too used to calling it that from just messing around when streaming Sun and Moon um, on Twitch. Uh, self plug there. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can only get each technical machine or each TM once, so you can't get multiples, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, you can get, you can buy TMs later on in the game, uh, which the ones you can purchase, yeah, you can get multiples of those, that's great. Uh, but like I say, the ones that you get as a reward, or the ones you find in item boxes or from, from NPCs, you unfortunately can only get once. And like I said in, I think yesterday, or not yesterday's episode, but Sunday's episode or the last episode, TMs in this game are sadly single use. Um, they weren't multiple use until uh, Generation 5 became a thing. That did a lot of damage to Slugma. Okay, that's bad, but also good, I guess, because we can call it, but it's probably going to faint. At least we can get rid of this Natu, hopefully. Uh, it's not doing too much. Actually, what levels are these Pokemon that we're up against? I just realized, but oh, they're level 30 as well. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, like I said, when, each time you go through the um, the Colosseums, the, the level of the Pokemon increase as well. And of course, each Colosseum has a different set of trainers you fight too. Um, but I think, I think each time you do it, it's the same, or each set of four, so the same 16 battles, they're all the same. Um, if that makes sense. I'm probably confused as confusion goes. I mean, in there, a bunch of you there, but I, I think I understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Hopefully you guys do too. Slugma doesn't seem to be lowering its heart gauge that quickly. Uh, and something else that I want to mention quickly as well, um, I might be using Noctowl and Slugma and Mistrevis on my team at the moment, but they're not actually going to be like team members for my final team that I want to go through the game with. Uh, they're just, in order to get the best reward possible in this game, you have to snag all 48 Shadow Pokemon and unlock the door to their hearts. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame, Slugma. Please don't faint. Um, and that's a long process, uh, so I'm trying to speed it up a little bit. I'm not going to show like every single battle with every single Shadow Pokemon and unlocking the door to every single Pokemon's hearts, but while I can, and while I don't have a full team on me, I'm going to be filling it up so that we got a team of six uh, with these sort of spare Pokemon because it's always good to have a team of six on you. Speaking of a team of six, technically we could go and do the Justy battle at the gym, the pre-gym now in Fenac City, but I recommend you hold off for a little bit just because his team's sort of like, I think, high 30s, low 40s in terms of level, uh, and you're going to have a difficult time uh, taking him on with the shadow Pokemon that are locked at like level 30. It, it's going to be tough. I recommend that you don't go for it just yet. You can do it if you want to. The reward isn't fantastically worth it, unless maybe you've got Bayleaf on your team. It might be worth going to, uh, going to get um, that. Actually, no, it wouldn't even be worth it then. Never mind. Because, like I said, uh, one of the rewards you get from... Or the only reward you get from beating Justy at the pre gym, I think, is Sunny Day TM. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but Shadow Pokemon can't actually learn TMs. So, oh, nice one. Knocked out. Jeez, that was good. Yeah, uh, you can't actually use TMs on Shadow Pokemon. At least I don't think you can. I might be completely wrong. I guess we'll find out at the end of this episode when I, when I claim my reward. But I'm pretty certain that until you've unlocked the door to a Pokemon's heart, you can't use TMs on them. Not very effective. That is absolutely fine. All right. And of course, for Shadow Rush, it's going to be nice when a uh, Slugma gets his flamethrower. <laughs> also, another thing that I want to mention as well, which I, I kind of messed up on, but I'm finally messing up on it, uh, is I mentioned about the Quagsire and how I'm going to be resetting to get the the one with the nature that I want, as well as in the correct Pokeball and whatnot. I'm not actually going to be able to do that either because you can't see what nature a Pokemon has until the heart gauge is completely empty. You don't have to unlock the door to its heart, but you have to empty it, and that might take a while to do that if I'm resetting. That might take a very long time. Uh, but I at least can get the one with the, the ability that I want. Um, that's really the main focus, and that's the main reason why I wanted to be able to reset. Okay, so like, must uh, emotions road to fever pitch again. So we'll give him a call. I don't think Slugma loses a lot of... 
his uh, heart gauge here from a call. About half a chunk. That's not the best. But hey ho, that's fine. Quick attack, probably on Slug Slugma. Yeah, Slugma's Slugma's got pretty good defense, so I'm okay with that. Uh, and luckily, we've only got another Grass type on the field, so I'm not too fussed about how this is going. Nice one. Volpix is down. Very good, very fine. Just leaves the Cacnea now. Cacnea is an interesting Pokemon, and this. The, that was something that I should have pointed out as well in that last sort of section there when we had both Vulpix and Cacnea on the screen. You could really tell the difference between the Generation 1 and the Generation 3 models. Because the Generation 3 models were produced fresh for Pokemon Coliseum. Whereas they just used the Generation 1 and Generation 2 models from, from Pokemon Stadium on the N64. Uh, so you can really tell the difference. I think I mentioned that last episode. I can't remember if I did. I'm pretty certain I did because we saw the matchup from the Ferret fight with Kale. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, Noctowl looks nice and round. <laughs> it's got a higher polygon count. You know, he's got a little bit more f fancy details with him, but like these Generation 2 Pokemon look kind of. You know, both Noctowl and Slugma are Generation 2 Pokemon. Uh, actually, Noctowl doesn't look too shabby. Noctowl, you're looking fantastic, just saying. <laughs> anyway, with that, we have defeated. Uh, I didn't even catch his name here because he's so lame. Red Bandana Guy, Vilch, in the semi-finals. Maybe you do have what it takes to handle that awesome Pokemon. We are one more trainer away from getting ourselves a, a free Shadow Pokemon, apparently, according to Kale. Here we have the, f uh, the final of the Pirate Coliseum, at least the first round, anyway. We got this unique bodybuilder guy. <laughs> Mirez, if you can beat me, Master Mirror B could come calling for your services. That was quick. <laughs> that went quickly. Alright, what's this guy got? A Bagon and a Goldeen. Ooh. Bagon could be a problem. Or Bagon. I don't know why I started calling him Bagon. I always call him Bagon. In fact, Goldeen could be a problem as well with Slugma on the field. I think I want to focus on the Goldeen, actually. I think that poses more of a threat than Bagon does. Alright, four Pokemon. That is absolutely f Surf? Just straight on in there with a Surf. That's absolutely fine. I'm okay with that. Oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> you know, Noctowl's actually pretty close to emptying its heart gauge as well, which is pretty good. Oh man, that did not do a lot. Recoil. Bagon is using Rage. Okay, I believe that confuses him at the end of his... I think a couple of turns, I'm not sure actually. Alright, Slugma is not going to do a lot of damage against Goldeen, but we can potentially take Goldeen out in this round. No, I'm going to have to have to call back Slugma, I think. Uh, he's not doing too much. Uh, have we actually, how close are we to emptying the heart gauge? Let's let's go for Flaffy. Let's go for Flaffy, and Noctowl, you can... Oh, actually, putting up a Reflect might not be a bad idea. Uh, a Reflect will raise your whole team's physical defense by one stage for, I think, five turns? And I think if you give your Pokemon a, an item called the Light Clay, it raises that to eight turns. So yeah, one stage is an extra 50% worth of defense, which, let's be honest, an extra 50% is nothing to shake a stick at. 50% uh, increase is good. <laughs> Uh, sadly, it doesn't stack, so you can't keep using it to raise it further and further, but hey, this is pretty good as it is. Alright, I'm... Oh, no, no! Oh, I accidentally clicked on it again. Dang it. I was just going to use a Shadow Rush on Bagon there, because Shadow... Um, Bagon does resist the rest of Flaffy's moves. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> but it failed. Yes. He's going to use a Bite. What was he going to Bite on? Oh, can we get the Paralysis? That would be nice. 30% chance. Oh, he flinched! What a bad move, or a bad turn from us. That was really bad. Horn attack, that's fine. That's a physical move, so... Reflect helps us there. Noctowl's emotions rose, uh, em emotions? emotions rose to a fever pitch. It's good for purifying, I guess. Here comes the rage. Doesn't really do much, that's fine. Now it's Flaffy's turn. Bye-bye, Goldeen, I hope. Thundershock isn't fantastically powerful. I think it's only base 40 power. Um, but hey, we get the same type attack bonus, um, which if you didn't know, same type attack bonus, it's, um, stand, uh, that's what STAB stands for. If you ever hear me talk about STAB, um, that's what same same type of attack bonus is. Um, we have Shadow Rush as our only real option here. In fact, I want to start focusing on the Bagon. 
I'm actually going to keep Noctowl in uh, hyper mode, just so that we can get some extra critical hits, because I think every time that Shadow Rush hits when you're in hyper mode, it's a critical hit. The trade-off is that sometimes you will use one of your other moves on a teammate. Sometimes you'll even attack your trainer or the other trainer. Um, it's, it doesn't actually do anything. It's just a, a funny animation. Oh man, that that's bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, something something to keep in mind. It's, it's quite funny. Oh, Thundershock. That could hurt uh, Noctowl, actually. Ooh, okay. Suddenly that Magnemite needs to go down. Let's just focus on it. Okay, will you Shadow Rush again? I was really hoping to show off um, some hyper mode features here, but apparently not. Apparently not. I think I'm going to call it after this turn, just to, just to stop hyper mode. Uh, because we've, we're down to the last two Pokemon now. Vagon and Delibird. Oh, Delibird. <laughs> well, there's a headbutt, four hit points. Oh, Flaffy just entered high. Okay. Right, our Reflect War off as well. So, I think I'm just going to call both our Pokemon to lower their heart gauges. Noctowl is probably going out. Yeah, uh, Flaffy probably isn't, but came to our senses, very good. Again, getting closer to, to lowering these heart gauges all the way is the name of the game. Um, I won't be switching uh, Flaffy out for a different Pokemon. Present is an interesting move. Dang it. There's a 20% chance that it will actually heal the target rather than um, the, rather than damage it. So, if you're lucky, you might get some free health. Sadly, we did lose Noctowl there, but that's fine. I think I want to send out... Sadly, we don't have any, like, fire moves. Otherwise, we could use... Oh, we do! We've got Quilava. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, well, you know what? Hang on. Is, is Delibird ice and normal or ice and flying? I really can't remember. I guess we'll find out, because if it's part ice type, then Quilava's flame wheel will be super effective. It's super effective, so it's at least part, uh, part, part ice type. I really can't remember what typing it is. Huh. Alright, and Bagon uses Rage yet again. That did, like, hardly any damage. That's fine. Shadow Rush is not going to take out this, um, this Bagon, but it might actually do a bit too much recoil damage to us. Two hit points left. Whew. Rage is building, that's fine. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to just hit it with a Thunder Shock anyway, just because... I mean, I know this guy's fast. Oh, do I want to? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to hit it with a Thunder Shock. It does resist Thunder Shock. Um, but I'm hoping Quilava's Shadow Rush is going to be enough to take it out, and it was. Nice. Okay, there we go. That was Pyrite Coliseum. Battle one, round one? I guess not round one. That was round one, two, three, and four. Uh, but there we go. Challenge one, I guess. You're some kind of strong. Good thing should be in store for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh man, this episode's gone on for a while. But there we go. That was the Pyrite Coliseum. Congratulations, you're the champion. You battled fabulously. Please accept your cash prize of 4,848. Nice. And as a victory prize, please accept this TM06 which is the TM for Toxic. We'll be looking forward to you and your next entry. So just to check, actually, um, was I correct in saying, oh, we've already got Torment, that you can't teach TMs to Shadow Pokemon? I'm pretty certain that at least Quilava can learn Toxic, so I'm pretty sure that you can only teach TMs to, to Pokemon that aren't Shadow Pokemon. Uh, I'm actually going to teach Toxic to Umbreon here, since Umbreon is a bit of a, a tanky character, I'm going to get rid of Taunt. Um, it makes sense for him to sort of stay in the fight, because Toxic will inflict bad... Or it will it will make the, the opponent badly poisoned, which will double the damage the poison does each turn. So it starts off doing, I believe, a sixteenth of the, the Pokemon's full hit points, and then an eighth, then a quarter, then a half, and then, I guess, the full one. I'm not quite sure if that is how it works, I'm pretty certain. But... Since we're running over a bit, sadly we didn't get our Shadow Pokemon from the Pyrite Coliseum like we were supposed to. I guess I'm going to call it quits here, guys, and say thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Just making sure that our team don't need healing, and they don't. And I'll see you all in the next one, where hopefully Rui won't glitch like she just did. And uh, we'll see if we can't get ourselves that Shadow Pokemon which we were promised. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.